All right. Hey everyone, thanks for joining me on Facebook Live today. Um, I know you're getting ready to kick off your weekend. Um, just wanted to do a quick connect right before I kick off my weekend in sunny Florida um, to talk to you a little bit about um, quality. This is a message to all my quality leaders out there in the, in the, uh, in the field. Um, and my message is really quite simple for you, and that is this, um, you're not alone. Uh, you're not alone out there. How do I know that you're not alone? Well, I know that you're not alone because uh, NICE does a benchmark survey um, every couple of years, and we survey our quality leaders out in the um, in organizations, all the way from the agents up to the executives. Um, and I want to share with you just some interesting statistics um, from one of our surveys um, that we did. Uh, actually, these are our 2017 results. We, if you want a copy of the full benchmark study, um, I'm more than happy to send that to you. In fact, we should post the link here um, in the comments after the video or maybe during the course of this. So we'll post the full 2017 uh, benchmark survey results. And then if you're interested in participating in our new 2019, we'll also, you're, you can sign up um, and complete that survey. Once you complete and participate in the survey, you are eligible to receive the full 19, uh, 2019 uh, version of that report. So I'm going to talk to you about just a couple of the key um, interesting stats um, just to prove uh, to you that you're not alone. All right, so first number, 57%. What does 57% represent? Well, 57% represents the number of uh, contact centers who uh, monitor, who um, a, um, offer customer service through channels other than phone, um, but don't do any quality monitoring on those channels. Um, so why would that be? You're having customer interactions. But there's no uh, quality management. There's no um, understanding of what is really happening between you and your customers on those other channels. Um, there's a number of reasons why they're not monitoring those other channels. Uh, one of the reasons is it's just too hard. It's not phones. Uh, quality management has been around for uh, since the dawn of call centers, right? 20 plus years, 30 plus years we've been around. Um, and these other channels are new and different. Uh, th those that are monitoring those channels are actually doing it in disparate applications. So we've seen anything from access databases to spreadsheets to paper copies um, of quality management uh, processes that are being done on these other channels. So most organizations are like, you know, I've only got so many resources to get this work done, um, and uh, this is not the channel that I can focus on. It's just too hard. Um, so my message to you is really, um, if you are uh, if you are servicing customers in these other channels, you have to figure out a way to monitor them easily. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. But first and foremost, uh, let's go into the next statistic. 50%. 50% of the people that responded to our benchmark survey in 2017 told us that manual processes are still their biggest challenge in the quality management space. And again, this is very interesting to me because a Quality management has been around forever. Um, we have to find a way, and I would tell you as an organization, if you're still plagued by, um, by uh, the amount of time it takes to set up your quality process, the amount of time it takes to assign interactions out for evaluation, the amount of time it takes to compile your reporting and your data at the end of the month or the end of the quarter and create roll-up reports. If all of those are challenges for you um, and you don't have enough resources or time in the day to make that happen, challenge your technology vendor to, to come to you with a solution. Um, there is no reason with all of the technology advancements that we've made, and I might be a little biased because I work for a technology company, um, but there's no reason that we should have to do things uh, continue to, to behave in this manual way. There are smarter, better, faster, more powerful ways to address your quality needs. And so um, think about that. 50% are still really, really plagued with manual processes. There are things that can be done. I'm just going to share two last numbers with you. 6% and 5%. What does 6% represent? 6% six, six represents the number of agents who felt like the quality program was truly there to make them better, 6%. Now, those of you that have heard me speak at conferences know that I'm very passionate about defining who you want to be uh, known as in your organization or defining uh, what you want to be to your organization, right? So when you're setting up your quality or your foundation for your quality program, you have to decide 
what am I going to be known for here, right? And 80% of those surveyed said their quality program is there to drive performance through the agent. Well, there's a little bit of a disconnect if only 6% of your agents feel engaged. So here's the deal. If you are saying, if you're telling me that your agents or your quality program is focused on driving performance to your agents, then I'm going to say involve them. Um, have conversations with them. Do they feel engaged? Do they think that there's processes that can be improved? How are you involving them? And more importantly, how are you empowering them? How are you allowing them to be their own um, self-advocate? Um, are you transparent with them? Are you, are you letting them know how they perform at any given period of the month? Um, because those are all things that create that um, uh, table stakes. It's that, it's that investment that you get from your agents that they're a part of the solution, right? Um, and you want more than 6% of your agents to respond as if they know that this is about quality coaching, making me a better person, making me a better online agent um, in order to drive my business forward. They know that they're a part of that. That other number, 5%, so how about this? Only 5% of the executives that we polled said that they leverage quality to make business decisions. Um, that uh, that they, they don't really look to their quality team to provide them with a good, solid source of data points to know what's the next step that they need to take to move forward. Um, and I'll tell you, there's a lot of reasons why. Primarily, I think we're all still, uh, many of us, are still stuck in that traditional model. That traditional model gets you a 3% sample of your, your customer base. So, so you're really looking at like 3% of the overall interactions when you're talking about the traditional model. Um, you know, how effectively can that roll up into, into making um, broader, bigger business decisions to really propel your industry or your organization forward? Um, so again, quality professionals, I'm gonna challenge you. Look for different ways. Uh, your technology can help support you in making more meaningful, more broader decisions into having a seat at that executive table and saying, um, you know, my team brought this forward or this is what our piece side of the organization has been able to contribute to the bottom line um, for our company. Um, we really, it's not that everybody uh, wants it to continue on this way. Everybody is ready for different. Um, so be bold, take some pretty bold steps. Um, if you don't think that you have uh, the right tools in place, again, I would challenge you um, talk to your vendor and um, let them know, you know, I'm looking to really provide some significant difference in my organization. Can you help me automate? Can you help me really reach my agents on a grandiose scale? Um, and I promise you, um, they should be able to deliver that to you. Um, so with that, I hope Michael Jackson, you are not alone, is not stuck in your head all weekend. Um, uh, again, just wanted to share these results with you. I offer out to you to participate in our next uh, round of surveys, and you can get that full benchmark uh, survey study once it's complete. All you have to do is answer a couple of questions. Um, this is Charlene Gillum, Product Manager for the Quality Solutions at NICE, and I'm signing off. Um, thanks, everyone. You have a great weekend.